Hello, my name is Brian McConnell, and today I'll be going over track view in CryEngine 3. To open the track view window, go to View, Open View Pane, Track View. It pops up down here. You're also able to detach this as a separate window if you would like, but I will just keep it down here for now since I can't display both monitors. First off, for organizational purposes, we will create a new track view layer, which I'm going to name Track View and we will activate that layer and select it. Then we will go down into the track view window and create a new sequence by either clicking this add sequence button or going to sequence new sequence. Here we will name this sequence. I'm going to name it sequence 01 just so I can keep saying the word sequence. So click OK and when you create a new sequence a uh, sequence object will automatically be created at point zero zero zero. When this sequence object is on a layer that is not active, you will not be able to animate. Um, you'll be able to move the time slider, but that's it. So we will keep this layer active. In order to edit a sequence, you, uh, you can go to this edit sequence button in the track view window. Uh, here you can uh, change the name, and by default, the start time is 0 and the end time is 10, making it a total of 10 seconds long. Uh, for the purpose of, for the sake of this tutorial, I will just uh, lower that to 3 seconds. Now we will add the entities to the scene that we would like to animate. I'm just going to drag out some objects for now. Here we have some pickup objects from our game Nexus. Uh, since we don't want them to be named Geom Entity 1, 2, and 3, we're going to rename these. Uh, I'm going to name this one to Shells, as in Shotgun Shells. This one to Rockets. And this one to Cells. Now to add these objects so that we are able to animate them, just to select the ones you want. You can either go to this panel in the track view window, right click and go to add selected entities, or you can go over to this add selected nodes button. In this drop down there are other options. If you would like to check scale, it's not checked by default. So. Now you are pretty much ready to animate. Um, the easiest way to navigate in this time bar is to use the middle mouse wheel. Um, if you push the middle mouse wheel in mouse 3, you can pan left and right. And then if you scroll up or down, you will zoom in and out. So that's the easiest way to navigate, in my opinion. So let's start animating first step is to come over here into the play toolbar and click the record button. Um, now you select your objects and you're able to set keys by moving, rotating, and scaling if you made that an option or not, but I'm not going to bother with that in this tutorial. Now you are able to do some basic animation. You can drag the time slider to the next frame that you would like and move and rotate your object. Let's move it up a little just for fun. Uh, continue on and you'll notice that it is setting keyframes as I go. Basic animation. Now that we have our keyframes set, we can turn off the record button drag our time slider back to zero and test our animation by hitting the play button. It will play through once unless you check this loop button here and then it'll play constantly. By default the move keys button is activated so you can select keys and move them to the time that you would like but if you would like to slow down or speed up animations you can select this scale keys button select your keys and either slow them down or speed them up 
there's a couple different ways to copy and paste keys. One is you can select your keys, hold shift, and then drag. That'll make a copy of the keys that you selected. Um, you can also select the keys, right click and go to copy, or hit control C, and then paste them. They will paste in the same exact spot, um, so be aware of that. You can also copy an entire animation from one object and paste it into another by either going there, hitting control V, or going here and going to paste keys. Now both of these objects share the same exact in information animation was. As long as the record button is off, you can select these objects and move them and their animation information along with them so that they're not directly on top of each other. Now that we have this crappy animation, let's uh, polish this turd by going into the curve editor. Right now we're in the dope sheet, which it opens up in by default. So we'll go to the curve editor and under, see I'm animating the rockets. So under the rockets in the position, you'll see these keyframes and in the rotation, you'll see those keyframes. Um, if you have ever animated before, then this should all be familiar to you, but you can change the different tangent in and outputs uh, right here, just like you can with the Curve Editor and other 3D applications such as 3D Studio Max and Maya. You can see as I select this key and adjust the Beziers, it's updating the curve in my viewport. And you can also delete selected keys by hitting the delete button. Each key has its own value specified over here in this panel to the right. You can copy these values and paste them to other keys. You can also adjust the value of keys by without adjusting the time by holding shift. Okay, one last thing, in order to delete a sequence, you can either select this sequence node button, or the sequence node object, delete it, or go to this delete sequence icon, hit yes. Um, it'll set your objects back to their start frame position, and that's pretty much it. That sums up this tutorial for track view and cry engine 3. If you have any questions, please post on the forums.